afternoon, everyone. My name is Adrian Hart. I'm the Executive Director with the Master Plumbers Association of Queensland, and it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon, and I thank you for giving up your time, and I thank you for your promptness. Uh, we had about this many people registered, and you're here on time, so uh, well done and thank you. Just to highlight, firstly, uh, two housekeeping issues. One, please uh, put your mobiles to silent or vibrate or something like that, just out of respect to everybody else. Uh, secondly, uh, the toilets are off the foyer immediately uh, behind us where we came in, or to my right or your left, just into that foyer there if you need to go. Um, probably don't need to say anything about evacuation procedures, just follow the staff, I'm sure they'll be the first ones out. The the process for this afternoon is that we're going to have several speakers and then we'll have plenty of time for question and answers. So if you don't get your question answered while a particular speaker is up, uh, don't worry, there'll be a forum at the end and we've allocated quite a, uh, a lengthy period of time for you to make sure that you have the opportunity to have your say, give us the feedback of the experiences that you've had over the last month or so and also the opportunity to ask the questions you want to put to the speakers. The speakers uh, today Chris Harris, Director of Plumbing Legislation Standards Branch, Building Codes, Queensland, and also wears the hat as Manager of the Plumbing Industry Council, uh, or Registrar, I'm not going to Registrar of the Plumbing Industry Council. Eddie Denman is the Manager of Plumbing Services in Brisbane City Council, and we also um, have Anthony Cronin from the APA Group. He's the Manager of Capital Works, Queensland Networks. I'd just like to acknowledge a couple of the important guests here as well. We've got um, Bill Denman is Senior Advisor, Plumbing Legislation, Building Codes, Queensland. Um, we did have Esther Bless coming from um, the PIC, but unfortunately she's an apology. A number of you will have met her previously and um, know that she presents very well uh, and is always open to taking on comment and, and uh, answering questions. From our association, uh, we have Bill Watson, our past president, Rob Rouse, junior vice president. Uh, John Salmon, uh, councillor, is due to be here, but I don't think has arrived yet. Uh, and we also uh, got some representation from other local authorities, specifically Brad Hodgkinson from Moreton Bay, uh, Ian McDonald also from Moreton Bay. We were to have Greg Bird from uh, Logan, but um, in his place representing Greg is Mort Kelly. I'd just like to take a quick uh, moment just to highlight a couple of other things that the association's involved with this year. This is the first of our public or, or industry functions for the year. Um, we've got a few coming up that I think would be of interest to you. And I'd just like to point out that there are registration forms on the table on the left as you're going out this afternoon that you might like to pick up. But in March we'll be celebrating the World Plumbing Day with a breakfast and a, and a golf day at uh, Victoria Park and that's on uh, March 11. We have a number of plumbing industry forums and trade nights throughout Queensland during the year and the dates of those are listed on the flyers. We have a plumbing and gas industry awards program being run again this year and that will be highlighted uh, with the presentations at the industry dinner on the 22nd of July at the Sofitel Hotel. And at the end of the year we're also running a joint plumbing conference once again um, this time in November, on 3rd and 4th of November down the Gold Coast of Jupiter. And we do that in consultation with the industry uh, associations, being the Backflow Prevention Association, the Institute of Plumbing Inspectors, the Hydraulic Society, Society of Hydraulic Consultants and ourselves. Um, it is a worthwhile conference. Those of you who went last year, I'm sure will have got something out of it and I would encourage you to put it in your diary now before the end of this year. We're represented this afternoon with um, the staff from the association being Penny and Emma who have organised today's event. David who looks after our membership benefits and uh, helps uh, people join our association and Ernie is our training uh, coordinator and uh, Ernie would just like us to mention that there are training programs being run this year by the association again and we've got a calendar for the first part of the year that's out and we need to highlight that um, we are continuing to run the training for the solar heat pump endorsement and that uh, as of the 1st of July if you're performing that work you require the endorsement. I've been given quite a bit to say but I won't continue in that vein I'm sure Chris may have something extra to say but it is important to understand that um, if you run the business or supervise the employees, even if they have the endorsement, that's not enough. You as a supervisor and or the uh, owner nominee also has to undertake the course and achieve that endorsement on your licence because you are the person responsible for supervising their work. 
You may have noticed in the paper recently there was an advertisement from uh, Apricus in terms of offering 3,500 solar hot water systems into the marketplace. I'm happy to talk about the details of that after the event. However, just would like to highlight that there are going to be two uh, training sessions run in our office at no cost for anybody who's interested. The dates for those are Friday the 11th of February and Tuesday the 15th of February, both starting at uh, 5.30. Finally, um, Penny's asked me to mention to you as well, uh, if you're a tradesman employee that's not a member of our association but you would like to talk to us about how you could benefit from being associated with us. Uh, we do have a provision for individual associates and that may be of some interest to you and you should speak with David after the event. Having said all those very brief words, once again thank you for your time. I'd like to introduce Chris Harris to be the first speaker. Thank you Chris. Just going to check my sure this is um, operational first. much guys. Um, it's great to see so many of you turn up. Um, as you can imagine, um, there's been quite a significant impact over the last uh, well, month or so with what's been happening in the community, both locally and across Queensland. Um, significant, obviously, the floods and now the cyclones has caused quite significant damage, which obviously from the perspective of building codes, Queensland um, has really sort of ramped up what we've been doing. Uh, subsequent to that, there has obviously been some significant changes that we've had to introduce and we've had to do them a bit on the run, but these are an attempt to try and alleviate some of the issues that we've got. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to run through some of those changes. Uh, some of the changes we've got here is the solar and heat pump hot water system installation. Um, first of all, you've got the, the endorsement which come in on the 1st of January. That endorsement basically means that unless you have it, you cannot install a solar heat pump system uh, oven unless it's in relation to a brand new dwelling, but the installer still needs to have that endorsement process. That would enable you to use the Form 4 rather than actually go through the permit process with your local council. So that's, that's quite a plus, and it should be quite a bit of a cost savings for those guys that have taken that endorsement and take that process, just the $25 rather than normal permit process, and hopefully it should speed up all the installations for you. One of the things we have done uh, in response to the recent uh, events, and um, some of the damage that obviously has gone around some of your communities, and, and I'm sure some of you guys have probably seen more firsthand than I have, although we have sent officers out to have a look for ourselves, has been quite devastating for some of the community members here, particularly in relation to the damages to some of the, the plumbing and certainly in relation to the hot water systems that, that some just don't even exist anymore. What we decided to do is that we felt that it was rather an imposition to continue for those particular people, especially the ones that haven't been covered by insurance, um, for them to then replace what is then an electric system uh, with a solar system and find that they're even further out of pocket um, on just on the basic replacement. So what we actually um, did was we actually changed the Queensland Plumbing and Wastewater Code. That officially went through on the 19th of January. And what that basically means is that if you have an electric system which gets severely damaged by the flooding events, and this will, will also be accommodated by the cyclone events as well, that you will be able to replace an electric system with another electric system. Uh, that's, that's one of the things we introduced. Um, one of the things that we made quite clear in that was that the plumber who does the installation or prior to the installation must also uh, um, make it clear that when they go out and do an inspection it has been damaged by that sort of event. It, it can't be anywhere else. Uh, we've also had um, uh, uh, an issue regarding uh, tempering valves, which we put out a news flash earlier in the year. If you are replacing a hot water system with another hot water system, 
You do need to make sure that a tempering valve is on it. That's by the Australian standard. It's quite clear in there. We don't expect it for replacement of taps and other minor issues because we don't believe that's a need replacement. But definitely where you're replacing a hot water system, uh, with a like, even if it's like for like, um, we regard that as a new system. And so therefore you do need to make sure that if it hasn't got a tempering valve within the, within the actual plumbing work, you do need to put a new one on. Again, the sudden endorsement calls for those that haven't done the calls. Um, is there how many can I have a show of hands those people have done the calls? Oh good. That's fair. Quite high number. That's very good. Um, that course is accredited through a registered training organisation. Uh, there are several of those. Master Plum Association is one of those that offer that training. Um, you can go through two two routes to that uh, endorsement. One can be through a training organisation that does it, it's, the other can be through an online system which we have, um, which is done through, uh, through Building Codes Queensland. And that's, that's what's called a non-accredited course. Um, and once you've got through that, as I said earlier on, that enables you to use the Form 4 process for any installations rather than going through a permit process. Um, we just want to touch on this, and it was mentioned earlier uh, by Adrian in his opening speech. Uh, we do have a hot water recovery program in place. This was a program that was offered to us immediately after the floods event. It was something we felt that the community could benefit from, and uh, we decided that we would offer our services purely in an administration role only. And that's exactly what we've done. We, we basically have set up a registration facility for those people in those areas. And it's a one-off, so it's not something we're offering for every manufacturer or supplier. We've made that clear that this was an respon immediate response in relation to the, the flood emergency that occurred. But they, um, the company applicants have offered 3,500 units uh, at a significantly reduced price. And uh, I would suggest to anybody that, that might be being engaged to, to uh, replace hot water systems or renew hot water systems, certainly in those flood areas, to have a look at that system and see how it compares. Uh, that's not saying that you don't try any other system. You're perfectly entitled and so is your client to use any other manufacturer. But that's just something that we've, we've suggested that because of the discount they were offering, we felt that it needed to be put out there. So I just want to raise it again today.